Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to go ahead and look at the new portal functionality that was released as part of the spring update. Now, the release really has been more focused and centered on online deployment. So as of right now, you know, the functionality that we're going to show you in regards to the Microsoft release of portals is strictly focused for online customers and online deployments of the application. There isn't necessarily a on-prem version of, of this functionality under the Microsoft umbrella at this point that is currently available. Now, obviously, this has been a real hot topic. I've had a lot of requests for videos and different things on this. So I figured now would be as good a time as any to get in there and really just kind of explore how you set it up, what some of the configuration looks like, and, and moving through options from there. Now, obviously, just like some of the you know project service functionality and some of the field service functionality that we've talked about in previous videos, this is not something we're going to be able to cram everything into a 10-minute video. There's a lot to consider in regards to how your entities are going to be exposed, how you're going to just you know work your way through the interface to, to make some of your baseline customizations. Um, how you're going to be able to extend that functionality through, you know, templating and some of those different items. So we're going to kind of start at the beginning. We'll we'll build so we'll build a portal. We'll go through some of the baseline customization capabilities, some of the baseline configuration functionality that sits inside the application itself, and then we'll just kind of build on that over the course of several videos, so you can truly start to see, you know, what this new solution looks like as you start working with it and, and building it. So first and foremost, Portals is an add-on subscription. So this is something that in your online environment, you would have to add this functionality. Um, you pay for it monthly, based upon a monthly agreement, and then you can go ahead and, and work with information from there. Now, from a configuration standpoint, when you first come in and your instance has been enabled for portals. When you go over to the applications area of your admin portal, you will actually see an option in here for your portal situations. And so this is will not, and it'll tell you in the status that the portal has not been configured and that you need to go in and configure the portal is part of the application. And so when you go through and you click on manage, it's going to walk you through the setup of actually configuring the portal inside and, and, and setting it up. And it's going to ask you a few different situations. It's going to ask you, you know, what do you want to call the portal? It's going to ask you for kind of base binding informations around what you want to use for the binding of the URL information. It's going to ask you who your administrator is that you want to use for this portal. Uh, this administrator account obviously has to be a CRM user user and somebody that's in the, the CRM instance that you're working with primarily, preferably uh, an administrator to allow some of that functionality to get associated with it. It's also going to ask you for the portal audience that you want to work with. And so there's really three different types of portal audiences. There's customer facing portals, there's portals geared more towards partner specific situations and then there's kind of the employee self-service portals now remember that if you have you know partner portals and if you have employee self-service portals those portals are also going to require that you have the appropriate licensing for your individual users who will be accessing them to be able to work through and, and kind of streamline that functionality and then within that portal audience depending upon what you pick, then there's different types of uh, portal bindings around the, the website record that you can work with. There's templates out there for you know, customer self-service. There's custom templates if you just want kind of a baseline portal that you could get started with from that standpoint. There's community portals. The, once you select the audience, there will be several different options that you can choose from the, the binding for the type of portal. After the fact, if you ever decide you want to change the binding, maybe you've decided to deploy customer self self-service but you want to go more with like a community-based portal there is options to go ahead and do that you can actually go back into the the instances of the items that you have associated with your portal you can actually select that portal and then there's a solution that you can use to install the appropriate portal solution that you want to use and then subsequently go back and just change the bindings to represent either customer service self-service or whether you wanted to use like the community portal there isn't necessarily a capability inside here at this point to have you know kind of both a customer portal and a part of portal you would have to have separate instances for each one of those in order to facilitate that now once your information has been created once you've gone through and you've defined what type of portal you want to use it'll walk through the configuration setting up your portals and then it'll bring you back to this screen so this is one that's actually already been configured and so one of the first things that it shows me in here is kind of my baseline portal URL 
that I have for my portal instance. And when I click on that, that's ultimately going to bring me to my portal that has been designed. Now, within your portal, when it first takes you into here, you will have you know, different, it, it'll bring you into kind of just the generic anonymous access version of the portal. So if somebody were to basically browse into the portal without having a subset of user records associated with it. So one of the things that you have to remember with portals is every user who will be accessing the portal is going to have to have kind of a user account associated with that. And they actually do that through the contact entity inside portal. So you define inside the, inside the contact entity information like you know, who they are, what passwords they're going to use, those types of items. And that allows kind of the setup for the authentication for the, the user that you want to work with. Now, in this case, I'm going to just sign out as administrator here real quick. And then I'll go ahead and sign back in. There's several different ways that from a portal perspective, users can request access to the, to the portal. So one of the options that you have is to actually invite users out into your portal where you can actually send out invitations to the user. The user can click on kind of the, the redemption link. It'll take you into here. They can redeem the invitation. They can then set up their account, define their password information that they want to work with, and then basically obtain access to the to the portal based upon what specific web roles and items that, that have been assigned to them, which handles kind of the authentication mechanism that we'll talk a little bit about in another video. The other option that they would have is if they're a brand new user coming in, they can go ahead and they can just hit register. This would then walk them through setting up kind of the, the registration of the account, which would then notify you inside the application that would allow you to basically grant them access to the portal and then assign appropriate web roles for them. Or once they have an account, they can basically go in and just sign in with that information. Now, there are multiple methods of authentication that you can use. You can use kind of a kind of a forms based authentication inside the portal where you are managing their user accounts and passwords and, and what items they have access to from within there. But you can also use, you know, external providers for authentication mechanisms. So you could, in essence, allow them to use their Azure Active Directory account to authenticate to the application and then work with it from there. So once they've, you know, defined how they want to sign in, in this case, I already have kind of a username and password. I'll go ahead and sign into the application. It's going to take me basically into my profile area. So this is where I can kind of designate, you know, who they are, what their email address is. This is where if I want to change their password, if I want to associate information with emails, if I need to confirm my email address, this is basically the profile for the user who is accessing the, the, the actual portal based situation. So this is what their profile is going to look like once they've kind of authenticated to the application. Now from here, even though I'm logged in as kind of the system administrator, so I am a user of the portal, but I'm also somebody who has admin access, I'm going to be able to do several different situations. I'm going to be able to navigate through this portal just like a user would be able to, but I'm also going to be able to perform some administrative tasks on this portal where I can use some of the kind of inline editing capabilities that the application allows you to do. So one of the other things that you're going to see over here is kind of this toolbox. And so this toolbox allows you to do things like, you know, work through some some of the navigation, add child pages directly from within here, add new elements to this uh, to this portal based upon specific needs that you might have, make changes and modifications to the overall page and items that you have in here as well. Now, the other thing that you can do is because of some of the, the actual in online or inline configuration, I can hover over different elements of this portal application. And as I hover over these different items, I can make changes directly from within the interface itself. So this is going to pop in my, my baseline information with my WYSIWYG editor. That's going to allow me to go in, add some text, maybe bring in some image styles and, and other media into this if I wanted to, but basically modify what people are going to see from a header application or, or standpoint within the application uh, within the application 
as you make those changes, that information then subsequently pushes back into the application and then you will see those changes live in the site environment that you're working with. And so this is where if you want to go in and just make some, some, some generalized modifications to any of these individual items on how they present, this is where that's going to allow you to do that. Now, each one of these elements is also stored as kind of a configuration element inside CRM. And in a future video, we'll actually take you into the CRM application and we'll show you specifically how you could modify and configure and control some of those individual elements from within inside that application. But the nice thing about this is I really truly have the capabilities to do you know, most of my inline editing from within here while I'm working with it and get that real-time feedback. Up here on the top, I have kind of my navigational elements that I can work with. If I click on edit here for the navigational element, this is gonna show me sitemap or sitemap navigation. So this is gonna show me what is being displayed within here. This is where if I wanted to add a new navigational element to this bar, this is where I could add that page and I could define specifics around what that page looks like and, and how it functions. If I have additional pages or pages that are already in here that I want to modify, this is where I can actually come in here. I can hit edit this link, and this is what shows me some specifics around what's taking place. So it tells me things like, you know, the name of the link, the page that it's linking to within the portal. So this is where I have some opportunities for changing that. It also shows me the, the publishing state, but then it gives me some other options around, you know, what I might want to use to configure this. Well, obviously you saw within the home element that this is basically the home button. So I have an image file that I'm using to represent that home icon. And then I also down here have the capabilities if I want to, to say that I only want to use the image file within the application. So by modifying this information here, as I make those changes, those elements are automatically going to display inside the portal. The other thing that I can do is if I come over into kind of my toolbox or my toolbar area and I click on children, this is going to show me kind of every page that's that's really a child page in subsequent relationship to the home page that I'm on. This is where it's going to show me how what each page looks like. Um, it's also going to give me the edit capabilities to go in and perform specific editing on that page. And it's also going to tell me if some of that information is available through the sitemap. So if it's something that's visible to be explored through the sitemap, if I want to be able to work with that, I certainly can. So it gives me some, some baseline editing information around how I want to work through. Now, since this was actually deployed as a customer service facing portal, they've gone through and done a lot of the heavy lifting to get this up and running for you. So this is going to have some of your knowledge base functionality kind of built into it already. Or if you were creating your own portal, this is where you could design what that knowledge functionality looks like. So as I click on this knowledge base information, now it's going to take me into a knowledge area, which is actually going to be tied to my knowledge information inside CRM. So if you remember with some of the new functionality they released with the 2016 update, you can assign categories to your knowledge articles. As you assign categories to those knowledge articles, and then those knowledge articles are exposed to the, uh, and you have your portal functionality, those knowledge article categories are now exposed and visible from within the portal. So this is where now if I click on hardware, this is going to expand that category, and it's going to show me all of the subsequent articles that I have directly associated with that hardware category. It's important to note, particularly in these initial uh, phases that you're working with, if you want help desk articles or knowledge base articles to be exposed on the portal, you do have to make sure that you, at the very least, have the categories assigned within your application. Now, this particular instance also has something like the my support. And so this my support is unique in the situation that this is actually associated specifically with the case entity. And so these are using things what are called entity lists. So one of the things that I can do from within the portal situation is I can expose different lists that I might work with. The different views and items associated with those lists, I can define what items and how they're going to be displayed inside the portal. So as people or customers log into this, they go into my open cases, it's going to open up the entity list that's going to specifically have all of their different cases that have been worked with from there, the status of those, where they came from, you know, who's working on them, those types of things. These are just views inside the application that you would normally see from a CRM perspective that I can customize and then surface from within the item. I can also add functionality in regards to like opening or creating a case. 
And so when I click on open a case, what this actually is doing is this is opening up what's called an entity form. And so this entity form is based off of an entity within the application. And there's several different ways when you configure these entity forms, and we'll talk a little bit about these in another video as well, that you can define what, what happens in here. So you can create a form where people could just view the case. You could create a form where people could create a new case within the application. You could create a form that would allow people when they've selected on something to edit an existing case. So if you think about kind of use case situations, this might even flow over into like a field service situation where I'm going to have a portal that's going to allow my customers to come in, create a work order directly from the portal, and then be able to enter information into there. So you have the capabilities inside the, the configuration elements inside CRM to really define what these these pages look like and how you want them to be displayed to users as they're moving forward. Now again, the, the purpose of this today was to show you kind of the, the baseline situations in regards to what you might see from within the portal itself and some of the, the baseline setup stuff. In the next video, we'll take you into the CRM aspect of it and we'll show you how all this information was created and then subsequently surfaced inside the application. So then starting to kind of build on that functionality and working with some of the baseline stuff from there. So that's going to do it for our intro video. Like I said, this was really more designed to, to let people see what they look like, what are some of the baseline inline editing capabilities you have, how is the navigation of the portal kind of structured, how do some of those entities and items that you see inside CRM translate to what you would see from within the experience using some of the pre-canned templated options. In future videos, we'll, we'll explore more of around the configuration, take you into actual CRM and and show you how to design those entity lists and show you how to design those those entity forms and create page templates and talk more about authentication and and how the authentication mechanism works and and how do you handle security and permissions inside the portal to control who has access to some of those individual situations but for today we at least had the opportunity to see what those what those portals look like and some of the baseline modification capabilities that are out there so that's going to do it for today so again for all of us here at CRM tip of the Day. This has been Derek saying thanks again for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.